Silicon is the most used semiconductor material in electronics industry. And in this course as well, we'll be taking silicon as an example for most of our understandings and problems. So to start with, we want to understand the bond model of a semiconductor material. So we are picking silicon as an example to understand this. So to start with, silicon atomic number is 14. This 14 represents the number of protons in nucleus. If you assume silicon to be a neutral atom, the number of electrons will also be 14. Now if you see the electronic arrangement, electrons arrangement, which will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. So s orbital can have two electrons at maximum and p can accommodate six maximum. But in this case we have 14, so two went here and in the second shell we have eight and in the third shell we have four. If you observe carefully, in the first shell we have only two available states, all are filled and in second shell we have eight states, eight are filled and in the third one here we have eight but only four are filled. So if you add this two plus eight plus four we get this 14 number. This is called the first shell, this is the second shell and this is third shell. Just to represent this in pictorial way let me say this is the nucleus of silicon which has plus 14 and the three shells are like this. This is the first shell, this is the second shell and this is the third shell. From here you can see the first shell is the innermost shell which is closer to the nucleus. So this we call inner shell and this is the middle shell and the third one which is far away from the nucleus which is the outer shell. Let me represent the number of electrons here. The first shell has two electrons and second shell has eight electrons and the third shell has four electrons. Every time we cannot draw silicon atom like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an equivalent model. I'll take till this point and say there is plus 14 in the middle and 10 electrons are actually covered by this imaginary circle. So I'm adding that charge. So I'll have just plus four. So I'm going to represent every time silicon like this. So I have plus four in the center and I have only the outermost shell, which is like this. And the electrons are represented this way. One, two, three, and four. So this is the modified silicon model that we're going to use for our understanding. Practically, silicon is used in crystal form. When we say a material is in crystal form, the atoms are arranged in a very systematic pattern. And usually it will be repetitive which means there is a pattern which will repeat itself. So that unit pattern in general is called a unit cell and that unit cell of silicon is very similar and in fact it is exactly equal to the unit cell of diamond. So we can say the unit cell of silicon is unit cell of diamond and of course I'm not showing here because that's not relevant for us at least in this course. But what is relevant for us is, if you look at that structure, at any point, one silicon atom will be actually having four neighboring atoms with which it will have bondage with. So let us see how it actually looks. So if I take a structure like this, basically at this corner, one silicon atom, another silicon atom, at this corner, one, another here and in the center of this cube we have one silicon atom. So basically this silicon atom in the center one will be bonding with this silicon atom here, this silicon atom here and the bottom one here and this. Similarly all these silicon atoms again will have four neighboring atoms. If you see one of its neighbor is the center one. So I'm not showing the complete picture but any silicon atom that you take will be looking like this with four silicon atoms as its neighbors. This kind of structure physically looking at it, it is called tetrahedral bond because if you take a tetrahedron, all these four atoms will be at four corners of tetrahedron and silicon atom will be somewhere in the middle. 
but every time we cannot draw this three dimensional figure so what we're going to do is we are going to have a similar model which we can draw every time to make us understand important concepts we will convert this into a two dimensional equivalent model which will be helpful for us so i'm taking one silicon atom here so another silicon atom one above one to its right side one to its left and bottom so silicon atom has four valence electrons so this is the model we are using from here now because the silicon atom has eight available states in valence but only four are filled now what it does is these two will have sharing of these two electrons so that the silicon atom will have one of it shared with the neighbor and the neighbor one shares to this one similarly the other one this one and this one similarly the other silicon atoms will also be having neighbors so they will also be sharing so now this kind of bonding is called covalent bond because the atoms neighboring atoms are sharing their valence electrons to make the bond and in general covalent bonds are really very strong that's why you can see silicon i said in crystal form is very similar to diamond and diamond is very strong so in the sense covalent bonds are really strong but silicon is not as strong as diamond because diamond is formed with carbon carbon atom size is very small so they are very close by so it's really strong whereas silicon atom is a little bigger so relative to diamond silicon is not that strong but still silicon is strong so next time onwards when we refer to silicon crystal structure we'll simply draw this kind of picture we don't represent the three dimension and whenever i draw this you know how to assume the silicon atom is plus 4 in the middle and four electrons in the valence which are shared with the neighbors the silicon atom has four valence electrons so in the periodic table if you see in four valence electron category we have carbon silicon and germanium as well so carbon atomic number is 6 silicon is 14 we have seen and germanium is 32 now all of these materials when they are in crystal format they all basically have the same structure and silicon is a semiconductor which is most prevalently used that's what we said in the starting and germanium was used way back before silicon was used but they found germanium has some problems which silicon can solve and silicon has a lot of things to offer so presently and for a very long time silicon has been in use all of these materials have the same structure in the sense the diamond crystal structure and similarly the bonding is also covalent bonds for all of them and silicon and germanium are the semiconductor usage whereas carbon we will see why it can't be a semiconductor directly in crystal form